Hey everyone, this is Andrew here from iDownload Blog with more WWDC 2016 coverage. This video is going to go hands on with the new Swift Playgrounds app for iOS 10 and iPad. So I have my 12.9 inch iPad Pro running iOS 10 and the new Swift Playground app. This app aims to be the best way for anyone to learn how to code. Currently, the fundamentals of Swift and two different challenges are readily available to get going. Apple believes that everyone should learn how to code and it should be required a language in schools. That's why this app and all the lessons are completely free. Currently, the app is available as a developer preview, which means the only way to get your hands on it is to run the developer beta of iOS 10 on an iPad. So here we have all the different playgrounds that I've currently started. When creating a new project, you can choose from one of two templates if you need a jumping off point, or you can create an entirely new project that's blank. So if you're an experienced coder, you can go ahead and just get hands on with whatever you want. Or if you need a jumping off point, you can choose the two that are available right now, such as answers or shapes. So here we have shapes. It's really simple. It just allows you to drag this circle around when you run your code. You have these little previews here that show you what those variables are. So in this case, it's a circle with a radius of five. Alternatively, you have the one that's called answers. So it basically asks you a question, you fill out an answer and it displays your name. So in this case, it asks, you know, what's your name? I go ahead and type Andrew, hit the submit button and it responds back with that variable. So it just teaches some really basic coding techniques. Now, what's really neat is auto predict. It'll actually give you a bunch of different coding syntaxes to insert into your code as you're typing. And there's also a special coding keyboard. Unfortunately, I can't really demo that here on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, but on a slightly smaller screen, it has some really cool uh, effects you can do. So it'll give you like a secondary character on many of the keys and you can simply swipe down to use those characters. So if you had like an asterisk or an apostrophe, you could simply swipe down to use those. But here on the larger iPad, it doesn't actually give me those predictions, unfortunately. On the top though, there is that plus button which allows you to add different types of media to your project. So it could give you just a bunch of different code syntax so all the different Swift commands and functions that you can pull into here and there are quite a bit of them. The middle option is to add photos. So any photos that you currently have, so you have one image, but you can take images or pull them in from your library or other applications. And then lastly, any documents that we need to link to this one. Right next to that plus icon is the question mark, which allows you to get help or documentation on what you're working on. Now, one feature that I really like that they built in is this ability to record the screen. So as I'm coding or as I'm running my code, I can record what I'm doing and then stop the recording and then be able to share that recording. So it's really cool if you did an animation that's really nice and you don't have to do it 50 50 here this does support like split screen so i can just move that bar to the left and just see my running code and then i can record my project my code and then actually send that uh, send my application to someone else to see and they can see what i've actually done so that's a really neat feature allows you know kids or anyone really who's doing this to share the work that they've been working on so aside from the just blank playgrounds or these templates that we started out in, you also have challenges. So as soon as you think you're ready to take on these challenges, they give you some commands on the left about what you should do and some basic outline of code and you have to go in and complete that one. So here we have this music one that allows you just to go ahead and complete that challenge. But really before even challenges, you need to learn to code. So that's what these lessons are for. They walk you through really the basics and there's a lot of really cute animations that kind of explain what you're going to be do and how it works. So this starts off with the uttermost basics of coding. So that's what we're looking at here and we have our little character called Byte. So the object is to get Byte to collect that gem. So I can use my autocomplete in QuickType which would be move forward, move forward, move forward and then collect gem. So about four lines of code here. So you can see he moves three steps forward and collects his gem and have completed the challenge. I can then move on to the next challenge or the next lesson, or I can jump around using the table of contents on that left hand side. There are a ton of different options here that get pretty in depth. And this is all just the beginner course. There are you know more advanced courses coming in the future, but this is really just the beginning of the starter block for everyone to get going and start learning how to code. So if you're an adult or a kid, if you've ever wanted to create an iPhone application or start learning Swift, this is a great place to do it. 
Swift Playgrounds will be available for iPads running iOS 10 this fall. If you have any questions, go ahead and let us know. Subscribe for all of our other WWDC 2016 coverage and new operating systems. And until next time, this is Andrew for iDownloadBlog.